Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from
hallelujah to your name. Everybody know music. Come on. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, Lord. To your name, oh Lord, for your name is great. For your name, your name is great. Oh yes, it is. And greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name. strength of my life he moves all pain misery and strife. come on he promised to keep me never to leave me hey never never come short of his word I've got to fast and pray stay in the narrow way oh yes keep my life Clean air. I want to go with him. I want to go with him when he comes. I come too far, come too far, and I never find it. Hey, God is. Come on, Zion. Come on, love on him. Think about what you're saying. Come on, say, God is. Come on. God, God is the joy hey. and the strength of my life. God he is. Pain, hey. God is. God is. Hey. Testimony. God is. He don't want the little whole shot. God is. time we gonna sing it with no music everybody come on God is, God is the joy and the strength of my life God he is all pain Bless your God. misery and strife oh yes he promised he promised to keep never to me. leave me never to leave never never me. never 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 come short sure. Life clean, keep my life clean every day. I want to go with him. I'm gonna go with him. I've come too far.
Clap those hands for Jesus. Hele Moshe. Hug three people on the way to your seat and tell them I'm excited about your future. Hello, Basi. Hallelujah. 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 I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I'll never. God is. Sunday. teach.
Please sit down so I can teach. He's here. He's here. I say he's here. exalted, the king is exalted on high, I will pray, it's him, he is exalted, the king is exalted. In the presence of the Lord. Woo. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Don't we serve a good God? Amen. Well, thank God for Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus one more time. All right, let's get into this. Ephesians chapter 4. Ooh, don't you love his presence? Don't you love his presence? He is the Lord forever. His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth. Rejoice in his holy name. Rejoice in his time. He is exalted. Oh, the chapter 4, let's get straight into the Word of God. Again, we're grateful to be here. Clap your hands for Jesus all over this room. <laughs> Amen. You know, you, know what, what, you know what you should be grateful about, Charlotte, is that we are known for worship. Amen, and invoking the presence of the Lord, and we know that God is a spirit. Amen. That's St. John 4, 24. And they that worship him must worship him how? In spirit and in truth. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. I'm so excited about what God is doing, and it's my assignment to make sure you're growing. Tell somebody, you got to be growing. Look at somebody else and say, I want to grow. I grow. 
So we've been talking about this new man, this, this recreated man. And, and I talked about how Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24 uh, says, put on the new man. Uh -huh. You got to put on the new man. And what we talked about before that is one thing that I, I, I'm not sure that most of us, and I, I always kind of do this as a stickler, because I really want you to understand this, that God is not mad at you. Yeah. Try that again. I said, God ain't mad at you. Yeah. According to Jeremiah, his thoughts to, concerning you are good. Yeah. And it's not evil, and it's to give you what? And expect it. Tell your neighbor, God's not mad at you. Come on, find you another neighbor that looked like they got a little something in their belly. Tell them, God ain't mad at you. All right, so I really want you to understand that and how he died for you, all right? And um, the word of God declares, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness. And, and, and I'm telling you that because I was taught my whole life, especially in the holiness church, uh, that you had to do all of this striving and dotting every I and crossing every T in order for God to accept you. And here I was trying to do everything right and be perfect. And then I found out that God is not impressed with me. All right? That Isaiah 64 and 6 declares, all of my righteousness is as what? Look at somebody and say, you ain't all that. I know your mama told you that, but she lied to you. You're not all that. You're really not, all right? Everything you are, you are because of him. And so he said, I want you to put on the new man. Somebody say it again. Put him on. Put him on. Say it again. Put it, on. put it on. That's right. You got to put on that new man. That, that new man don't have to be, don't, it, the new man is not striving to be righteous. He has been created in righteousness. And he's been created in true holiness. And that's very important for you to understand. If there is a true holiness, there's a false one. Give me Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Come on, let's go there quickly. Who's ever back there on that, on that uh, screen? I, I hope you're ready. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God, verse 2, for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to what? Look at verse 3. They being ignorant of God's righteousness are going about to establish their own what? And have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. I want you to understand all righteousness is not his righteousness. And any of your righteousness, he don't care about it. Come on, let me give you another verse. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Let's see what the word of God says in Romans 12 and 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living what? Sacrifice. How? Holy. How? Holy. Under God, which is your what? Reason, All holiness ain't acceptable. Yeah. All holiness ain't acceptable. God is not impressed with your long dress. Y'all quiet in here. God is not impressed because you look deep and look spiritual. Give me 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. Let's see what the word of God says. Give me 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, don't look on his countenance, don't look on the height of his stature, because I refuse him. For the Lord don't see folk like man see it. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the Look at somebody and say, your heart got to be right. That's what God is judging. God's judging a man's heart. And the word of God lets us know that you got to put on that new man. Now, God don't put them on for you. You got to put them on. I want you to understand that because we are a new covenant church, we think that that uh, absolves you of any responsibility. The Bible declares in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Let's try that. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Well, for my dearly beloved brethren, having these therefore promises, let us cleanse ourselves. God ain't throwing your weed away. You got to throw it away. See how y'all got quiet on me? Y'all done shut down on me. Amen, amen, amen. God ain't getting rid of your other woman. You got to do that. Amen. 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 God ain't, God, God ain't taking them cigarettes out of your mouth. You got to take them out. You, you can't be telling God take it because he don't take. You got to give. You got to present your body. You got to present that stuff to him. And I promise you, if you give it to him, he'll take it from you. Yeah. 
but you got to give it to him. Say amen to that. God ain't getting rid of your other woman. He ain't getting rid of he, all the things in your life that you want to be easy. You got to cleanse yourself. Give me another verse. Come on, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Come on. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Let's see what it say. Wherefore sin we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us, let us, let us do what? Let us do what? Every, you got to lay that aside. See, God ain't doing it for you. You got to do it. You got to put on your new man. And that new man, which at the God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. That means that once I put on that new nature, I, I, I don't have to struggle to be holy because that's my nature now. Somebody say, I am holy. Come on, say, I am holy. Come on, with confidence, say, I am holy. Now you got to keep confessing that. You got to keep declaring that I am righteous. I am delivered. I am free. I am healed. Amen. You got to keep confessing that because you have what you, you have what you, all right. So you got to put them on. And once you put that new man on, your spirit man should now be in control. Uh-oh. I said, now that you put him on, now you got to allow the spirit of God to control your senses. You got a new man on now. And if you got a new man on, you should no longer, I'm coming, be controlled by your appetites. I, I, I tell the young men in this church, young ladies too, but I tell them in this church, marriage don't cure lust. You think that getting married gonna make you be faithful? No, uh, baby. No, uh, uh, uh. Lust is never satisfied. Lust will make you get out the bed with your wife and go look for somebody else. You got to deal with those appetites before you get married. Cause if not, you gonna take lust in the bedroom. Nobody shout no more. You got to gain dominion over your feelings. Come on here. God ain't going to make you smile when you want to look angry. Lord, you just got to help me with my face. You got a face. Help your own face. Those are decisions that you got to make. But because you have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, it shouldn't be a struggle anymore. Okay, when you was a sinner, it was easy to lie. It was easy to be a whole chasing, free basing, whiskey nipping, cocaine sniffing, pill popping, weed chopping, tobacco chewing, cigarette sucking, pipe puffing, skirt chasing, midnight rambling, bingo gambling, devil. When you was a sinner, it was easy to do that. But now that you're a new creature, it ought to be hard to be a hoe. It ought to be hard. Tell somebody, I got a new nature. It should be a struggle now. Yes. It should be hard for you to mishandle people. Yes. It should be hard for you to mistreat people. Yes. Amen. When you mishandle people, something on the inside ought to let you know you ain't doing right. Yes. Something ought to mess with you on the inside and say, you didn't handle that right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Say amen to that. Yes. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. Yeah, you got to put on that new man. You got to put on that new man. Hallelujah. And you got to get control over your appetites. Yes. Amen. How many of you know that God yes. is not going to make that pound cake disappear? No. Matter of fact, that fried chicken going to be right there. No. 
Come on here. God is not, and Prophet Khan is not going to get rid of them apple turnovers and rare velvet frappes. No, 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 no. Guess what? You, you know Dr. Now, you know Dr. Now, before Dr. Now does the procedure, he puts you on a diet. I say before Dr. Now, who is Dr. Now? That's a 600 pound life doctor. Before Dr. Now agrees to do the procedure, he puts you on a diet because he knows there's no need in cutting your stomach if I ain't first cut your mind. See, you got to get free here before you get free here. Come on, come on, y'all. Your appetite got to change here before your appetite change here. So these are things you got to do. You got to put on the new man. You know, you got to put on that new man. God ain't going to make you shut your mouth gossiping. Look at your neighbor and say, be quiet. Know why you got to do that? Know why you got to do that? Because the Bible said, give me Titus chapter 3. See, some of us talk way too much because we don't believe the Bible. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Verse 2, to speak evil of Amen. The Bible say don't talk evil about nobody. That's talking about your ex-husband. Quiet church now, ain't it? Talking about that man who did you in, that person who mistreated you. Speak evil of no That's the word of God. That's the promise of the scripture. You can't talk about people. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you how the devil gets you to talk about folk. See, see, the only way you can talk about somebody is, let's say, let's say, let's say me and Sister Joy, friends. Mm -hmm. And let's say, Sister Joy, mistreat me in our friendship. And let's say I'm friends with Sister Kia. And now that Sister Joy is friends with Sister Kia, I decide to go and warn Sister Takia about Sister Joy. Because in my mind, I think I'm warning her. But the only way you can warn somebody is you have to freeze them. Because your warning has to be from something that happened in the past. And you don't know if they changed this morning. So the Bible say, speak evil of. Can't talk about people. That's what the word of God says. Those are standards you have to have. And that, that's that new man. That new man is going to have to gain dominion over your mouth. Gain dominion over your appetites, yeah. your desires. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. You, you ain't got to shout. That's how I know I'm preaching good. Somebody say, put on the new man. Because of your sin nature, you had a propensity to, to, to evil. Because of your sin nature, you had a proclivity to negativity. But now because of your new nature, you have a proclivity to positivity. Amen. It used to be hard to do good, but now it should be hard to do evil. Yes, because if any man be in Christ, he is a? Tell somebody, I'm a new creature. A new creature. Come on, tell somebody else, I'm a new creature. A new creature. So now when I talk, my spirit is talking. I don't just say what I want to say because I've learned that you think twice before you speak once. Yes. So I'm not dominated by my feelings. I'm not dominated by my thoughts because I got a new man. I'm a new creature. Say amen, church. Amen. amen. And, and these are things that as you put on this new man that you're going to have to understand it's a walk. It's a journey. Say amen to that. Yeah, it's a journey. You're not going to perfect it overnight. You got to get in the practice of being quiet. Yes, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. You got to get in the practice of discipline. Amen. 
Husband, you got to get in the practice of loving your wife. Hallelujah. You need to learn. You, you, you don't need to take selfishness into the marriage. You need to be working on that before you get married. And I want you women to understand, you ain't just going to submit because he said, I do. As soon as I say I do, I do what he say. Not if you ain't been practicing. Come on now. That, 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 I, that ring ain't going to make you say, yes, Lord. You got to get in the practice of overcoming evil with good. Because you got a new man, but that new man is not mature yet. And you got to crawl before you walk. So you have to learn how to walk this walk. Tell somebody again, it's a journey. It's a journey. Tell somebody else, it's a journey. 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 Got to get to a place where your inner man now dominates your outward man. Yes. Yes. My inner man dominates my disposition. Yes. My inner man demonstrates how I respond. I got to learn when to talk and when not to talk. Say amen. I, I absolutely, it, it had to happen last night. I don't know if y'all know Sister Griffin, Sister Griffin who goes to this church, Sister Griffin's husband passed last night. And so as soon as I got in, as soon as I got in, I went and went there and I had just got in from Houston. And I got in and, and was at her home for about two hours, uh, sitting there with her, they hadn't came and picked up the body. I didn't want to do that. I was tired. You understand? I, I won't go home and get in the bed. And, pu and, and, and push my feet around in the cold covers. Right. Right. Amen, amen. I don't want no hot covers. I need them to be chill. Right. Praise God. Right. Yeah. Amen, praise God. Amen, praise amen. God. My God, come on here. Ain't nothing like, ain't nothing like dark and cold. Yeah. All the lights out. Dark and cold. And my God, moving your feet around looking for all the cold spots. But guess what? I couldn't be dominated by my, I couldn't be dominated by how I was feeling. I was tired. But guess what I understood? I'm a pastor. And it was actually my absolute pleasure to have the opportunity to serve. It, it, it was my, I, I felt good. I, I, I called somebody, I said, I feel good. I, I feel like I was actually a pastor today. Because I, I got a midnight call. I had to go see about somebody. Say amen. Oh. Amen. 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 That's a pastor. Amen. But when I got done, I was ready to get in the bed. That's what I mean. I didn't want to be bothered. Amen, Amen church. Amen. So you got to put on that new man. Can't be dominated by how you feel. And that's why you all got to get in the habit of praising God when you don't feel like it. My God, I, I'm, I'm from Jacksonville. They say a man went into the, that's, that's right down the street from where I'm raised. A man went, went in the store, went in Dollar General, and just went to shooting folk. Say he didn't like black people. Like black people. Amen. Killed a baby too. You understand? And then somebody got to beg you to praise God. You don't know how much he done covered you from. How much God protected you from. How much God sustained you from. Whether I want to or not, I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Give me five more minutes. He said, he said that you got to put on this new man. Uh, uh, give me Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. He said, put on the new man. And then, let, no, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 now. Put on that new man. Get, don't be dominated by your flesh. Tell somebody, don't be dominated by your flesh. Don't be by your flesh. Amen. How many people know your flesh still want what they want? Yeah. Amen. I'm saved now. I just want to be in the room all day. You lying wonder. You still got passions. You still have desires. You still have appetites. But you're not dominated by how you feel. Amen. You ain't forgot how to cuss. Glory to God. Amen. 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 You ain't forgot, but you got to put on your new man. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, 
for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, he hath what? Quickened Come on, he has what? Quickened us. quickened us together with him. Now that word quickened don't mean he made you fast. It means he made you alive. You know, before you met God, you were dead. Let's try that again. I said, before you met God, I don't care how cute you was, you was cute and dead. If you don't know Jesus, you ain't nothing but a walking dead man. Give me Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. We'll start at verse 1. And you hath he quickened. That's, that's what Ephesians 2 and 1 say. Come on. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in what? Trespass in sin. If you don't know Jesus, you're dead. Amen. Amen. Dead man driving a Mercedes. Dead man with three women. Dead with a bunch of money. You're dead. And it took his word to bring you alive. One day you were sitting in service, a dead man, and somehow God caused that living word to come to you, and it brought you alive. The Bible declares, who hath he quickened, who was dead in trespass and sin? But go back to verse 4. He says now, hallelujah, in verse 4, glory to God. He said, but God, who is rich in mercy, what that mean? You ain't saved because of you. You saved because of his mercy. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Tell somebody, I owe him. I owe him. Yeah, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, verse 5, verse 6, 5, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace, ye are what? Oh, I'm about to get happy. Here's my verse. I can't. This was me. And have raised us up together. And made us sit together. In what? Look at somebody and say, wherever he is. Wherever he is. Come on, wherever he is. Wherever he is. I, am. I am. Go with it, God. Wherever he at, I am. Well, the Bible declares that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the who? That's right. So if that's where Jesus is, guess where you are? Right there at the right hand. And why, why is he telling us he's seated? Because a king never stands up to make a decree. He makes a decree from his seat. And God wants you to know that you are seated in the same place I'm in. And if I can make a decree, guess what you can do? You can make a decree. My God, you can command cancer to dry up. Yeah. Amen. You command sickness to leave your body. Yeah. Tell somebody, I'm seated, I'm seated with him. That's right. You're seated in heavenly places. You're, you're in a place of authority. In the realm of the spirit, in the realm of the spirit, you are sitting in the seat of Jesus. Wherever Jesus is, that's where I am. And if I'm where Jesus am, I cannot fail. Tell somebody, I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. I'll never be defeated. Say that with confidence. Say, I'll never be defeated. Say, I'll never go under. I'll never die before my time. I'll die when I get ready. I was talking to a lady, she didn't mean no harm, and somebody had just died, and I was talking to her, and she said, you know, you know, you know, we can't control death. I say, I understand you can't. Because that's her testimony. But I read a scripture that said death and life. That Proverbs chapter 18, 21, you can't control death because you say you can't. But my God, if death come, I can look at death and say I ain't ready. Hey, I can resist death with life. Come on here. You ain't got to fall apart the older you get. Older you get, the stronger you're going to be. Let the weak say, I am. Let the poor say, I am. That's right. Say, I'm well. Say, I'll never fail. Say, I'll never go under. 
that, that means that when I speak, the power be kosha. That means when I speak, the power behind my words. I got, see, the Bible declares what the word of a king is, there's power. Y'all know that, right? That means that when a king makes a decree, he can't take it back. That's the only reason John the Baptist got killed. King Herod made a decree and said, come on in here and dance. Didn't know what he told her. He said, get your daughter to dance. He said, and if you dance right, I'll give you everything you want, even up to half of my kingdom. Boy, that's a dance there. My God, she put a dance on him. Amen, 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 amen. Married women, married women, married women, married women, married women, married women. You better learn how to dance before your king. Y'all ain't talking back to me. I said married women. I said married women. I said married women. Don't come in here and dance before the Lord and don't dance before your Lord. Amen. You got a Lord in your house. Lord, I say you got, I say you got a Lord in your house. Husbands, you the Lord of your house. Go to First Peter 3, they think I'll just be talking. Because people, people don't believe the Bible, they think I'll just be talking. Give me First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if you got a husband that don't obey the word, you got to without the word win him. Y'all always remember that. Wives, don't preach to your husband. See how they got quiet then? Bible don't give you grounds to preach to him. Bible don't give you grounds to correct him. I suffer not a woman to teach nor to use her authority over the man, but to learn it all silence with all subjection. That's 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. Go, on back to first, go to 1 Timothy 2, 11, then we're going to come back to 1 Peter chapter 3. So I, 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 I can preach what I'm preaching because I got Bible for what I'm preaching. See, the spirit, you listen to me, young ladies, and I, I want you to hear me. The spirit of this age, women, is a feminist spirit. It's a spirit that has no regard for men. Who run the world? Girls, that's a lie. That's the spirit of this age. It's a feminist spirit. Hear me by the spirit when I say what I'm saying. Hear me by the spirit when I say what I'm saying. All right? Now, now 1 Timothy chapter 2, start at verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Now, that word woman there in the Greek, just go home. Do, your, do, your, do, do a word study. The, probably one of the best Bibles you can get is a Hebrew Greek keyword study Bible. All right? That word woman there is gune. Gune is I suffer not a wife to teach. That's what it means. I suffer not a wife to teach. Don't take my word. Read it. And don't be telling me something, well, I'm going I'm, I'm to beat you down in a minute. I suffer not a wife to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. That word man there is husband. But to be in silence. Keep reading. Now it's going to tell you why. It's going to tell you why. Because if you talk to some people, they'll tell you that this is cultural. That it's because Paul was dealing in a time of culture. But Paul knew he was going to deal with folk that was going to try to get out of this Bible. So what Paul did was he went back to creation. Why did Paul go to creation? Because when you go to Adam, you are given God's intent. You got to pay attention to what happened in the garden. In the garden, God didn't talk to Eve. He spoke to Adam. It's Adam's responsibility to talk to his wife. 
Well, my husband don't hear God. You shouldn't have married him. Not going to listen to him. Don't marry him. Say amen. amen. All my shouting sisters that usually be shouting very quiet today. All the ones that usually be shouting, quiet. For Adam was first formed, then who? Look at verse 14. And Adam was not what? And Adam was not what? But the being was in the That's Bible. Book, chapter, and verse. Now, you want to fight me? Give me Bible. I'll make you eat it up. Now, when you are unsaved, or when you have a husband who is not saved, saved woman, it's not your responsibility to preach to him the Bible. Women, you don't preach to your husbands. You don't tell him, I, I, I think you ought to do it this way. I think you ought to do it that way. Sound good, but it ain't Bible. Give me 1 Peter 3 and 1. Likewise, ye wife, hallelujah to God, be in subjection to your own husband, that if you got a man that's not obeying the word, he may also without the word. You're wrong to give him a scripture. Where the Bible say, husband, love your wife. Out of order. You got to win him without the word. That man preaching, ain't he? That man preaching, ain't he? You don't correct him. You don't have Bible for that. God told you, you can't usurp authority. Without the word, he has to be won by the conversation of the wife. But see, you think that means talking. Let's go to NIV so you can understand what conversation means. They may be won over without by the, by the, by the. You don't preach at him. Keep being a wife. Win him with your behavior. You want to get mad, but humble yourself. You want to talk back, but shut your mouth. And give him to God. Give me verse 2. Ain't nobody shouting, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Verse 2. While they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear. This is where I was going. Who's adorning? Don't let it be with the outward adorner, plaid and hair, wearing of gold, putting on of apparel. Women, your beauty ain't in what you got on. Amen. Amen. If all you got is how you dress, you don't have much value. Keep reading. Keep reading. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. In that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a what? Even the ornament of a what? Even the ornament of a what? Which in the sight of God of what? Great price. You're valuable when you're meek and quiet. Not when you loud and boisterous. <laughs> Loudest one in the church. Hush. The louder you get, the more you decrease your value. Right. 
Go back to go to verse 5. This is where I was going. For after this man in the old time, the Holy Ghost women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection, verse 6, to their own husbands. Even as Sarah did what? Obey. 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 Abraham calling him Lord. Sarah called him Lord. And it says, whose daughters are ye? As long as you do what she did. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Spirit of this age. So I tell y'all about to get a house, you're loud in here. It's your time. How? He preaching. Go over to God. It's your time. Everybody's been coming against you. You're going to shut them down. Oh, blah, 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 blah. That man preaching. <laughs> but I teach, suffer not, su suffer not, teach you the order and, and the way you're supposed to act and carry yourself. Amen. You're quiet. That's good. Maybe you're learning. Amen. I see. Time to tell. See if I hear y'all down the hallway. <laughs> Women ought to be seen and not. Amen. 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 Now, the only reason, only, 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 reason, only reason John got killed is because where the words of a king is, there's power. She was dancing. She was dancing before the king. And the king said, whatever you want, I give it to you. I give it to you. My God, even up in the half the kingdom. And my God, she put a dance on him. And she went to him. He said, what you want? She said, I want the head of John the Baptist served on a charger. He didn't want to do it but he could not renege on his word. Because that's how powerful the words of a king are. Give me Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I love this holy hush. <laughs> Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. Look at what it say. Verse 6. And hath made us, and hath made us, and hath made us, and breathe. So now because you are seated wherever he is, guess what you are? A king. Because he's, his words are behind your words. Amen. Amen. And the minute you call something, that's why I told you, y'all got to understand the power in your words. You can't be, Thomas, um, I don't feel well. Because when you said it, I don't feel well wasn't assigned to you, but I don't feel well got to obey you. Because you called it because you were king. I ain't got no money. And guess what happened? I ain't got no money came right to you. Because you were king. Blaming stuff on the devil. And the devil said, I wasn't going to bother you today, but you just called me. I'm frustrated. Frustration say, I'm coming. I'm so annoyed. Annoyed say, I'm coming. And then you wonder why stuff keep happening. Well, you keep getting more annoyed because you called on the spirit of annoying with your words because you are seated in a place of authority. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. Please look at some out left and right and say, you got to be careful what you say. <laughs> verse 7, verse 7, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. I'm sorry, who's that back down the thing? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. But in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Next verse. For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourself. It is the what? Yes, verse 9. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. Verse 10, I'll stop here. For we are his workmanship. Yes. Create Ele Koshala. Yes. I said, we are his workmanship. Yes. Created in Christ Jesus on the good work. You don't understand. You know, you, you know how Toyota got a product and how Sony got a product. Slap your neighbor and say, I'm God's product. I'm God's product. 
I said, I'm God's product. God's product don't have no defects. Amen. You sit up mad at God. God, why I got to look like this? That ain't God's problem. That's your mom and daddy's problem. God's not responsible for you, how you look. God is a spirit. So God only duplicates spirit. God don't duplicate flesh. You look like your mom and daddy put together. And if you don't like it, you need to go talk to them and say, why y'all got together? Are y'all hearing me? But the part of you that is his workmanship is not your flesh, it's your spirit. And the Bible says your spirit has been created unto good works. Look at somebody again and say, I can't fail. I can't fail. Come on, say that again. Say, I cannot, fail. I cannot fail. With a little attitude, will you tell somebody this? You, I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Amen. You've been fashioned for good works. Ain't that what the words say? Yeah. You've been fashioned for good. What that mean? You don't destroy stuff. That means any way you show up, a blessing shows up when you get there. That means you make things better. It may put you at a job, the job going to take off. Anybody presence, I come in, I change your life. I make things good. Y'all ain't saying that. Say, I change, I change atmospheres. Say it again. I change atmospheres. Say it again. I change atmospheres. Yeah. You've been fashioning good works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm dealing, with your, I'm dealing with your recreated spirit. I'm not dealing with your flesh, but I'm dealing with your recreated spirit. And that's what we run into. That's what we run into, a lot of us in the body. I'm done. That's what we run into. Too many of us have issues because we won't put on, we don't believe what God say about us. We believe we are the way we are. And you don't understand, you can make adjustments. Hey. Amen, you ain't got to be crazy. Amen, you ain't, you ain't got to be me. God's moving for you, ma'am. You've been going through a rough path. A little spirit of depression been trying to creep up on you. Look like you're a little stuck. God told me to tell you that he's about to move for you. Peace is coming to you. Your coming here is not in God, God is about to move for you, especially in the area of your career. The spirit of God wants you to know that you, 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 you're not going to fall apart. But this is going to be a season where you're going to see the hand of God manifest himself in your life in a very powerful way. Don't allow the spirit of depression to creep upon you and make you sad. Because I saw you riding in the car talking to God about some things. The Lord heard you, and your coming here is not in vain. The spirit of God is healing you and going back to your childhood, some of the childhood issues that you dealt with. You don't share with many people. But the spirit of God is healing you from that place. God loves you. And as I mentioned, don't worry, I know you won't cry. Just let them tears come, baby. That's what we do in the holiness church. Say amen. But, but the spirit of God is healing you. And he's going to make your life make sense to you. As I pray for you right now, God's going to heal you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. I'm not where you are. I'm not where you are, but God's going to send his word. And he's going to heal you. There's a lump somewhere on your body, but God's healing that also. This would be a sign unto you that what I said, is, thus saith the Lord, you don't have to worry about cancer. You'll never have cancer. You are healed by the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. So, the, the, you, you got to learn how to put on that new man so you can be what God has called you to be. I want you to tell three people around you, this is going to be a great season for you. Say amen, church. I promise you, God's going to do some great things in your life. 
You got to trust him and take him at his word. And I'm teaching you all of these things because I'm trying to teach you how to develop your human spirit. How to put on your new man. Yes, you saved. Yes, you love the Lord. Yes, he came into your life. But now that he's come into your life, guess what you're going to have to do? You got to let him help you make adjustments. Submit to what he's trying to do in your life. Because I believe the sky is the limit to what God's going to do in your life. This is your season. Amen. Amen. I said amen. amen. Tell you what I know in the Holy Ghost, that great things are getting ready to happen in the lives of God's people. Well, take them at his word. We're in a dangerous hour, we're in a season of anarchy. Every man right in his own eyes. Everybody want to do what they want to do. But we're going to have to stay in this word. That's your hiding place. Throw me overboard. I got a hiding place. In the word of God, guess what I got? A hiding place. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the what? Most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. Make those adjustments. Amen. Allow the word of God to be able to come to you and you change whatever you got to change. Allow the word of God to be able to come to you and you just make the adjustment and you don't defend yourself and you don't fight back and you don't have to have the not last word. Let God help you make those adjustments. I do. I, I, I want to be like that. I told God, help me. Help me be a better person. Help me not be dominated by my feelings and my emotions. Amen. Help me not walk around looking like I'm going through because there's a spirit that loves attention. And the best thing you can do to somebody that wants attention is ignore them. What's that? Um, Mother Sachs told me that one time. I was asking her about the situation. She said, don't, don't, you don't got to address it. You know, sometimes you want to address stuff. She said, you don't got to address it. She said, anything you don't feed, you're going to die. Amen. Now, sometimes it takes a long time to die because it's a big old monster. Amen. There, there are some animals that don't eat for months. You understand? They go into hibernation. But all I'm trying to tell you is that you can change your life and make the necessary adjustments that you need to make so that God can do some great things in your life. This is your season. God said this is a year of distinction. Amen. Somebody made you a promise. Stand up right here. Yes, ma'am. Somebody made you a promise concerning a business proposal. It looked like you invested and did everything you could to try to make this happen, but they didn't come through on what they said they was going to do. But God said, I'm going to restore to you the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, and even the locusts have eaten away. Been through a rough patch these last three years. The devil been trying to kill you for the longest. I'm going back to your childhood. The devil tried to kill you. But God suffered it not to be so. I'm going to lay hands on you, and God told me to tell you your life is about to come back on track. You're going to live as long as you want, and you'll never want as long as you live. When I lay hands on you, strength is coming to your body. And God's going to undergird you. You be at peace. You can be at peace. This is your day. God brought you here for one reason. It's to let you know that he loves you with an everlasting love. I prophesy over you that whatever the verdict of the enemy was concerning your life and your health, the devil is a liar. You will live as long as you want. There's a, there's a family battle going on concerning some properties and some inheritances. Oh, and the Spirit of God told me to tell you, all of that they're trying to take from you, he's going to let it come right in your hand. You don't have nothing to worry about. The Lord has heard you, and it's going to be well, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One word from God. One word from God can change your life. One word from God can change your life. Ma'am, in the back, you got those red glasses on. 
Amen. You. I know you're shocked. Stand up. Let me talk to you. Who invited you to the service? How you heard about this? Sister Tyler. Oh, praise the Lord. Where you from? Miami. What you doing up here? You live here now. Lift your hand. There's a wall. That there's a barrier fighting you. There's a spirit that's been assigned to you that causes people to fight you for no reason. You got a big heart and just you've even overextended yourself trying to get people to accept you, trying to get people to like you. But there's a spirit that's been assigned to you from your mother's side of the family where women in your family, people just bother y'all and mess with y'all. And it's a spirit. But I'm going to pray for you today. And God is going to place you around people that you're not going to have to compete for their love. You're not going to have to compete for their attention. But there's a love of God that's going to overshadow you today like you've never seen. Right here in your stomach, you've been having a tightness and a, like a real bad pain, a bad acid indigestion reflux when you eat certain foods. But when I pray for you today, God's going to heal that too. You are healed. Shout, y'all. By the power of the day. Hey. I say she healed. Go. Go. I say go. <laughs> I say go. Go with it, God. God's real. I wish you'd tell three people around you, God's in love with you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise key, light in the...
to do something for you. Say, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. standing. You're not saved. Get up here. Backslider. Get up here. Need a church home. Get up here. Very quickly. We're going to put you in contact with him. Not saved. Come clap your hands. Somebody's coming. Backslider. Get up here. Need a church home. Get up here. Come on. Clap your hands. Somebody else is coming. I say clap your hands. Somebody else is coming. Anybody else? We got time. Waymaker. Waymaker. Oh. Miracle. Promise keeper. Light. Hey. Look at left and right. Say, are you saved and know you saved? Wait on the answer. Look at him again. Say, are you in right standing with the Lord? Wait on the answer. Wait on the answer. If they don't give you an answer, tell them if you ain't sure, you need to walk up there so we can help you. Don't, don't miss tonight. Tell them I'll walk with you. Whoever it is, come on, we got time. Clap your hands. I feel somebody coming. I said, clap your hands. I feel somebody coming. Come on. I say clap your hands, God's pulling on somebody. Yay! I say clap those hands. Spirit of the bridegroom, say come. I said the spirit of the bridegroom is saying come. Come on, come on. Hey, 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 hey. They're going to left and the right, ask them one more question. Say, what church do you attend? Wait on the answer. Wait on the answer. Who your pastor? Who tell you about your demons? Who ain't scared of you? Amen. Amen. Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the dark. Clap your hands, somebody's coming. Hey, clap your hands. I said we got two people coming. Come on, come on. Waymaker, bring her down here. Bring her down. Oh, that's fine. Promise keeper. Hey. My God. Yes, Lord. Stretch your hands toward this altar and begin to pray for God to give them what they need. Come 
Come on, pray in the spirit. Pray in your heavenly language. Clap your hands, somebody else came, come on. Urabasha. Je Baba Sandala Maki. Ilemosa. Praise God. Even when. Even when. You never stop. You never stop. Praying. You never stop. Even when, even when I can't you never stop. 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 Clap your hands, somebody else is coming. Waymaker. Miracle word, promise keep light. My God. Hey. Oh, say Waymaker. Hey. Give it it on. Pastor Belton. What's his name? John Mark. John. John Mark. John Mark. John Mark. I got you. Okay. What happened? He won't join KCC. Where you from? Barbados. Where you live now? You live in Charlotte now. Yes. You say you, you love Jesus. You sure? You positive? I'm positive, yeah. Well, praise the Lord. Who invited you to church? Mitch. Where you at, Mitch? Give Brother Mitch a great big God bless you. You sure? You sure you want me to be your pastor? I don't play now. You, you, you ready? He's, I'm ready, man. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Pastor Kelly. Brother Darius recommitted his life. life. Y'all don't get happy when folk recommit. What happened right here? Brother Cardarius recommitted his life. He's married to the who? Yeah, that's right. What happened right here? Brother Richard want to join KCC. And he rededicated his life to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. You, amen. Sister Bird, Minister Bird. Sister Ladacia Black. Second time here from Miami. Everybody from Miami today. We're moving from Miami to Charlotte. Live in Charlotte now. And she wants to join KCC. 
You gave Jesus your life? Amen. Mother Simon? Pastor Hilliard? Wants to join KCC. Come up under this umbrella. Come on, church. You say, you sure? Amen. I, I, I don't assume every pastor saved, y'all. Amen. Amen. But I believe he is. Praise God. Well, look at what God did today in the sanctuary. You that recommitted your life, it's a journey. Just for every saved person in here. Salvation is a marathon. It's a journey. You're going to walk with him. And I want you to know in your, in your recommitment to him, it don't mean you're going to be perfect from now on. Because you're going to mess up again. But stay in, stay in him. Don't leave him no matter what happens in your life. Well, one, two, four people joined KCC today. And three people recommitted themselves to the Lord. Y'all not going to get happy. Y'all not going to. Soon as service is over, you who recommitted yourself, see Pastor Kelly. He going to start on your journey here at KCC. And um, I take this serious, so we believe God for miracles. Amen? Amen. Clap those hands for what the Lord did. I say clap those hands. Somebody hug them as they return to their seats to love on them and let them know how glad we are. Yes. Well, you might want to let somebody else do it. You don't want to let none one of the other ministers do it since you got to be with the people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They know how to do it, don't they? You, you, you trained them yet? You did? Train in. They, 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 they. So who? Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, in God good? Yes. Tuesday night Bible studies in Jacksonville, so we won't be here this Tuesday. Uh, but I appreciate you being here today. And let's make sure God told us over the next couple of days to speak to our increase. And commanded to come in and tell somebody, I'm looking for increase. Looking for increase. Every, day week, Every day this week. Tell two more people, I ain't going to be shocked when I get it either. Amen. Amen. You got to stop being shocked when what you say come to pass. Because you have... Whatever you say, um, I, I will be here. <laughs> I will be here next Sunday. I think it's friends and family weekend, so I'm going to go to both churches uh, next weekend. I'll go to Jacksonville, and I'll come to this church next week. I'll go to all the churches next weekend for friends and family, so praise the Lord. And uh, we have the underground prayer movement on Friday, so make sure... You are a part of that. Amen. Stand up. Let's go. Y'all must stand up. Brother. I got out at a good time. Let me let me stay on my... There's food in the back. Now, was it as powerful as I told you it was going to be? I'm sure it was. That was a life-changing word. And you that stay connected, you'll always get that. I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of this church as usual. I need a word of power, a word that can change me and shift my life. And let me know that God's not mad at me. God's not upset with me. But his thoughts toward me are good, not evil. And it's to give me an expected end. Well, maybe there's somebody watching who are not saved. You didn't give your life to Jesus. But I want to let you know that Romans 10 and 9 says, If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be what? Saved. So let me pray with you right now. We call it the sinner's prayer, but it's just a prayer for you to admit your wrong. Give your life to him. That's if you're watching and you're not saved. I don't want you to miss this. Everything I did today and preached is all about trying to get you to come over here on the Lord's side. 
so your life will never be the same. Are you ready? Repeat after me. Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Dirty and unclean without you. I ask you, come into my life. Save me. Change me. And deliver me from the powers of hell. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, you got up with all power in heaven and earth. I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior. Satan, I renounce you. You are not my God. From this day forward, I am a child of the King. If you meant it just like that, he just came into your life. But guess what? Now you need teaching. My people are destroyed. Hosea 4 and 6. Because of a lack of knowledge. Get you a Bible. Read the word of God. Find you a Bible believing church. That is teaching new covenant teaching. What is that? Just, just, just find a church that teaches you. Say by grace. Not of works. Ephesians 2 and 8. Lest any man should boast. Well I love you. You can either look in Jacksonville, look in Houston, look in Charlotte. All the information is on the website. But until then, I hope you join me next week. Same time. This word will change your life and you will never be the same. If nobody told you, I want you to know today, God is in love with you. More grace.